Hi, my name is Manali, and I'd like to welcome you to the thought process. This is my official debut on YouTube, and the only goal here is to present you, the viewer, with some interesting topics that range from psychology, biology, sociology, and any of the other ologies that enter this scatter brain of mine. So, sit back, relax, and think a little. In my very first episode, I'd like to talk to you about the art of critical thinking. In this day and age, we are surrounded by the 24-hour news cycle, the 24-hour social media cycle, and whatever other cycle that you like to tune into. It can be a lot of information at one time. Now this is our feeling like a Thanksgiving turkey by the end of it. It's, it's too much. There are so many words being thrown around these days as well. Fake news. Real news, facts, alternative facts, opinions, what is a demonstration, what is a protest, what is a movement, what is going on, I don't know, it's too much. So hopefully this video will help you to critically think about what you're hearing and seeing out there and make an informed decision and come to an informed, hopefully, conclusion. What is critical thinking? So. According to the critical thinking community, and I've linked their website down below, it is the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to belief in action. So what's critical thinking? Well, basically it's developing your own argument and beliefs based on rational choice, based on what you experience out there. The five key standards of critical thinking are really nicely laid out. They're major keys fam, major keys. The first one is clarity. To be clear and concise about what you are communicating and what on the information that you are taking in. So the information should be presented in such a way that you, the viewer, should not be confused once you click out of it or once you close the book to, like, you shouldn't ask the question, what did I just read? I'm, when I'm a student. I read some textbooks like that. It's, it's not fun. For example, let's take the example of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Let's say you're trying to come to a decision about what you want to eat. Peanut butter and jelly, just the classic, or peanut butter and jelly with bananas. Yeah. With it's in a clear and concise way I might present to you why a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with bananas is a beautiful construct of the human mind it's it's amazing if you're a science buff maybe you want some scientific information on why a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with bananas is beautiful on your taste buds what molecules make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with bananas the way that it is or maybe you're not really a science buff and you want to look at opinions and testimonials by different people and weigh on on both sides and then make yourself a sandwich that you like. It's all about you fam, it's all about you. The next two key standards of critical thinking are precision and accuracy. Pre precision involves getting to the bottom of it. Cue Sherlock track. Precision involves asking the important question, the whys, the whats, and the hows. Why is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with banana so good? What makes it so good? What makes people want to seek out and actually make this sandwich? And how will this change my life? It might not, but I mean, just go with the flow, you know? It's, it's an example. The next one is accuracy. The information that is that you get should be accurate and adequate for you to come to for an informed conclusion. The fourth key standard is relevance. The information that you seek out should be relevant to the topic. If you're searching about pe peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and you're reading an article that has the premise of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich but it's actually about chicken sandwiches, I mean it's not going to do anything for you. So before you continue, be sure to pause, like physically pause perhaps the video, close the book, however you're seeking the information, and ask yourself, are they answering my question? And if not, 
maybe it's time to reevaluate how you're going to get this information. And finally, this last key standard actually does not come from this article, it comes from the critical thinking community, and that is keep an open mind. I mean, it's, it's self-explanatory. You are trying to seek out opinions and facts about many different topics. Keep an open mind about them. Look at both the sides, if there's two sides. Look at, if there's more than one side, think about other ways to adequately think about this information. And if you're not able to come to a conclusion, that's okay. You don't have to come to a conclusion. Maybe you have more questions than answers. That is okay. Questions help you come to that conclusion. Maybe you don't want to come to it. It's okay. You do you, fam. All I'm saying is be clear, be precise, be accurate, stay relevant, and keep an open mind. These five things will help you navigate the vast sea of information, of tweets, of social media posts, just everything. That's all for me, folks. This has been The Thought Process. If you like this video, you could give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe because I will make a new video next Sunday, and it'd be cool to see you there. You can check out my social media links down below. It's my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter, all them cool things. I will see you next time. Stay thoughtful and stay critical, my friends. Bye!